Welcome back to UC Star Astrologies. I'm your astrologer, Cindy. This is going to be the general horoscope reading for Virgo, April 2019. I have my, my board so that we can go through all that's going down this month in April. And the horoscope winner for the month is Patri Nile. Ni, ni la. <laughs> okay, so yes, that's the horoscope winner for a 30 minute free reading. Subscribe and win. One, one winner out of month of one, one winner per month. Okay, I have laid down the cards, um, five, uh, four cards this time, four cards from the Gilded Reverie, Lenormand, and four cards from the Sequoiner, uh, uh, Gypsy Fortune Telling Cards, Sequoiner Va Saga Katten in German. And um, yeah, so I called upon the four Archangels, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, and Archangel Uriel, the one, the four Archangels that pertain to the four elements. Okay, last week I, Felt like, uh, was it last week? The last reading, I mean. Last reading, I laid down five cards for one, but I'm back to four. I felt caught to four. Okay, dear Virgos, what's up, buttercups? <laughs> wow, I have to say that um, Mercury going retrograde was going retrograde in your seventh house, and now... Since the 28th of March, it is going forward in your seventh house, okay? So, we have Mercury in here, okay? So, here's that Mercury, okay? Looks like it's downloading information from the, from the ether, okay? It's about the brain. <laughs> Mercury is about, um, yes, about intelligence, about our thoughts. It is also about um, uh, communication, um, planes, trains, and automobiles. It has to do with internet, like I say, communication, and it has to do. It has to do with contracts. Okay, when it's in the seventh house, that's when we start wanting to make contracts, like wanting to find a, a work or. Um, yeah, especially internationally, that's very possible. Or getting involved with, if you are single, getting involved with someone who is um, from abroad, okay? Someone who is um, international, someone from not your culture, okay? In Pisces, because Pisces is about um, abroad. Someone who lives far away. Falling in love with, with someone who is not from your country, okay? And so um, that's very, very possible for many of you. Otherwise, if you are already involved with someone from your country, it will be mo more like um, wanting to be secluded, wanting to be alone together. Now, in and then Venus flew in, because Venus is also in here. Uh, let me see, Venus, Venus. Yes, Venus is also here. Um, she flew in also at the end of March, and she's still she'll be here until the 20th. So that Mercury conjuncts Venus. Okay. So uh, all of a sudden. <laughs> okay, V for Venus. I'm going out of blank. V for Venus. I don't know why this is V for Venus, because there's no more space there. Okay, so, and that Mercury. Now, um, so they're conjuncting, so that's a lot of wanting to make love happen. It's it's like, also, um, you are motivated to go towards that partner. You are motivated to, to make steps toward uh, trying to find a partner in your life, or if you are already involved with someone it's all about wanting to um wanting to commit like in a contract okay maybe this is the time where that special someone gets down on their bended knee 
and is asking you to marry them, okay? Now, I do have love here, okay? Here is Gelipte, so lover, <laughs> okay? It says here, can you read that? Sweetheart, <laughs> okay, so um, there definitely should be some kind of a sweetheart walking into your life, okay? Here, uh, this card was above it, you know, it's like a home, your emotions are stable or on fire. And especially if you were doing a lot of a lot of work in regards to letting things go, um, releasing the past, very possible for some of you Virgos, some someone from your past came into your life. It could have been best friends, okay, friends, very, very close friends from your past, or um, um a boss from your past or a lover from your past came into your life, okay? As for me, I'm Virgo Moon. <laughs> yes, I definitely felt that, that energy. So, and so it, it, that's three of the possibilities, either a boss from the past or a past, um, how do you say, contract, a job contract possibly came back or a best friend getting together with um, best friends you haven't seen in a long time, or um, or in contacting, you know, uh, best friends, or a lover, an ex-lover, okay? Now, if you were involved already in a relationship, then when that Mercury was going retrograde, it uh, very possible that you broke up, okay? Very possible that you got into arguments, but as soon as... Um, Mercury went forward again, you got back together, very likely you got back together, because if you break up during Mercury retrograde, you usually get back together when Mercury goes forward, okay, so that's good news for anyone out there, <laughs> okay, so um, now, another thing, another thing that is happening is on the 4th of April, Pluto opposes the North Node, conjuncting the South Node. I can do a video on that alone because a lot of my videos lasted really long just talking about that North Node conjuncting the South Node. And then at the end of the month, oh my gosh, it is major, like a major shift in the human consciousness upon the planet. It is so deep. People are going to be feeling this. People are, I mean, it, and this is a time where you just need to know it's going to pass. Whatever is happening, hopefully you were doing a lot of releasing, let it go, forgiving all those people in your life all the way from the day you were born all the way until now, present day. Releasing, 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 especially with this Pluto, North Node, and Saturn. If you're not releasing, your world is going to feel like it's shaking you down. You're going to get a major wake-up call. Really difficult situations could be manifesting if you don't release. Don't You just need to release. Okay, so release, forgive, let it go. That's the best way because South Node is all about letting go. Saturn is a karmic planet, and this is all happening in in um, Capricorn, your fifth house of dating. Okay, fifth house of dating in regards to your children, in regards to your creativity, in regards to your sex life, in regards to entertainment, or in regards to um um. Um, business that is that is um, business that is it's not wanting to come um, business that that is not like you're not getting a paycheck every day but it's it's um, you know like if I were to be making money here it would be that kind of um, uh, I just had it <laughs> it starts with the P okay I can't think of it right now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, 
that's things. Things are going to be like stock markets. If you have invested any kind of um, speculative, it starts with an S, a speculative business, okay? If you, you know, you could be really feeling like, you know, you, lot, you, you could be losing a lot of money in the stock market around this time. Um, any kind of speculative business, it will either you're losing or you're creating a business, okay? There's like some kind of transformation happening depending on your karma because the fifth house is your karma house. If you deserve the best to happen to you, Saturn is going to make the best happen to you. But that sat that self notice saying you need to let go of things. And you're going to have to see that you're going to have to cut out the karma, cut out the karmic people in your life, okay? And so, and and please, yeah, some, for some people out there, it may even be like if you have a, a, a child who's like a grown child and and they need to get up on their feet and you've been and they've been playing mama restaurant and mama hotel and it's time to let them go and say spread your wings little birdie and fly you know you've gone to college whatever and it's time for you to go out there and fly and I'm not gonna play your mama restaurant anymore for some people it's going to feel that way okay letting go of that child Letting them fly. <laughs> and less they're little, you know. But another thing could possibly happen is if there is a divorce of some kind that that there could be like some shakeups here in in having to share the child. Okay. So that's the fifth house. Another thing is is a lot of transformation in in who you are in in within you having to let go of blockages so that you are attracting the right person in your life, okay? But the only, you have to ask yourself, how do I manifest? How do I magnetize that special soulmate in my life? How? That's the question. How? It's inner work. That's how. You have to let go of the muck, let go of the trash, let go of the hate, let go of the anger and the past unforgiveness so that you can attract Mr. Right. Because otherwise you're just going to attract who you think is Mr. Right just because, or Mrs. Right just because she's so pretty or fancy. Nevertheless, it's going to be, you know, the same, the same person, but in different genes. Okay. So <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Next. <laughs> In regards to Jupiter, let's so Jupiter is going retrograde. He's been blessing your fourth house, your home, your family, you know, being able to pay the rent, stability. Okay, so Jupiter is going to go retrograde on the 10th. Okay, so this is a biggie. This is a biggie. It's going to make you inner reflect. It's going to make you... Um, Really inner reflect on your emotions in regards to, and you may be already feeling this. It's like that shadowy period right now, uh, right before, because I'm doing the, this video pretty late. This is the fourth. And you could be feeling this already. Like, if you have any blockages here, and, and when, when Jupiter goes retrograde, you're feeling that shadowy feeling where Sagittarius is either you're having to talk to doctors and you're having to connect with them. If you have any emotional blockages, because the fourth house has to do with your emotions, has to do with your family, has to do with your house, your home, your property. If you have any blockages towards law officials or doctors or gurus, any kind of emotional blockages, you're going to get enlightenment during Jupiter retrograde. You're going to, especially if you do the mantras, when you do the mantras, whoa, you're going to get dreams. You are go definitely going to get dreams on what your blockages are. Look it up on YouTube, Jupiter mantras. Yes, Jupiter mantras. And and, and all the time you do these mantras, um, you definitely get enlightenment while you're sleeping in your dreams, okay? What your blockages are. 
And so <laughs> I got one of these today, big time. <laughs> I'm like, <gasps> it was like an aha eureka moment. Like, oh my gosh, that is why. Oh. You know, if you have blockages here and you have, you know, problems, if you if a, if you've had your heart broken by anyone such as priests and nuns, and no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> hopefully not. But if you your heart was broken by someone you looked up to, a guru you looked up to, a teacher, a professor, or if uh, you never got along with doctors, never liked doctors, or you had problems with hospitals or things like that, or doctors, <laughs> or, or law officials, Yes, you could be feeling like um, you could be this inner reflection. Some kind of aha moment could be coming into your life, okay? And just go to the doctor and get it treated, okay? Okay, so another thing that's happening is on the 17th of April, Mercury goes into Aries. The 17th of April, Mercury goes into Aries. Um... Yes, so then Mercury flies from Pisces into Aries on the 17th of April, on the 17th. So, so this is your eighth house now, where you're, you are probably wanting to go really, really deep. And I have to figure this out. Okay, wanting to go really, really deep. Where's your Taurus in your ninth house? I, let me just share the cards, and I will figure out where, why, but uh, twice. <laughs> okay, this is, uh, in, uh, it's, it's very funny. Okay, I, side by side, I got this. Some money, yes, money blessings, and at the same, money upside down. Okay? So, then th this was over the money upside down, and the fish is also upside down. Three plus four is seven. It's like procrastination. The money could come. It's just waiting for you. Like the, the matrix is just waiting for you. You just need to work. Why, are, why aren't you working? Okay. It's like um, procrastinating, being in your thought, just thinking about it, just saying all you, it's like, cause the Pisces is about meditation, the house of meditation. Yes. Okay, or it could be because something it has to do with foreign things as well. So it is like saying, like you're just sitting there and and doing a mantra over and over and over and over. Yes, but you're not moving. You're not being a shaker. You're not being a mover. You're not doing it. But another thing that the reason that that this is upside down is because your Mercury was going retrograde. And now it is finally, I mean, it's still a little bit in shadow at the moment. But um, once that Mercury starts to not be in shadow, then you're like this. And that is why I am late, you guys, is because um, I here in Austria, I'm Pisces Ascendant. I just could not do it. I could not. <laughs> I needed two weeks away from anything and, and I didn't work I didn't work at all for two weeks um doing because I needed time alone I needed time to meditate and that is you know the this exactly this you know for some reason you were all in your head all in your thoughts and and you slowed yourself down from creating money okay um also there's blockages why are you blocking yourself the money is there, but there's some kind of obstacle in regards to perhaps communication or online things, in regards to internet things, that money is possible, okay? Money, and the, the either there's obstacles, but positive, there, because money is here and it seems positive, it's like you have to do the work. You have to climb up that mountain. Do the work, climb the mountain. Because that money is just waiting for you, but you have to put in the work and stop daydreaming. But uh, for a lot of us Virgos, we had to just take a break, especially when that Mercury was going retrograde. So now it's time to go forward. Mash. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm sure many of you are understanding what I'm saying here. Then we have a full moon in Libra 
on the 19th. Okay, this is your second house of many. That's probably also why money is very possible here. Okay, so full moon on the on the 19th in Libra. Last month we had it, a full moon in Libra, and now again a full moon in Libra, which is very rare. So you had a lot of time to um, to think about how to make money, okay? and to make good money. So now it's like, this is the month, if you didn't get it back then, and probably I think it was good of the universe to do that for us because of the fact that Mercury was going retrograde. And so now we can really cash in on this full moon on the 19th. We're, we're starting to catch, ca cash in, ka-ching. Ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> okay, because during the other full moon, somehow um, we were procrastinating. <laughs> we were holding back. Okay, so then um, holding back and making that job happen or getting the job or um, if, if you were trying to get another job or an extra job. Okay, then on the 20th of April, sun goes into Taurus, another money house. Okay, this has to do with your ninth house. Okay, so sun goes into here on the 20th. Okay, blessing. Money coming your way if you're a teacher. Yes, a lot of, a lot of emphasis, a lot of focus is being placed here. And feeling worth, you're worth or worthy by doctors or teachers or professors, um, or you feeling you or you um, um, feeling this towards your um, your colleagues who are um, lawmakers, gurus, teachers, preachers, professors. Okay. And this is also really good energy for higher education and philosophy. Test. <laughs> okay, so then on the 20th of April, same day, Venus flies into Aries. So Venus is no longer here, but she's in here. Okay, conjuncting that Mercury. Okay, so that is your eighth house of um, then Mercury is here and Venus. That's um, having to do with definitely wanting to tie the knot or get into a very deep, committed relationship, whether it be romantic-wise or relate or or um, business-wise, committing to some kind of relationship. Though it could be a little bit because Chiron is here, it could be um, it could be like. Because there's some lessons to be learned, and it could be a bit karmic, that person that you can attract in your life or that job could be like, wow, this is the best job. I'm so happy to have this job. But along the way, you're going to have a lot of learning to do. And, and that person that you fall deeply in love with may stretch you a little bit. Okay, so this is wanting to have a very a lot of energy a lot of sexual energy also <laughs> okay so um yeah and then it is having uh pluto goes retrograde and saturn goes retrograde hallelujah i already talked about the the fifth house and your children okay then saturn goes retrograde Saturn and Pluto. So Pluto is first on the 24th. Pluto goes retrograde on the 24th. Okay. And then on the 29th, Saturn goes retrograde. Oh, and then on the 30th, Saturn opposes the North Node and conjuncts that South Node. <sighs> okay, in the beginning on the 4th of April, it was it was it was Pluto that conjuncted the South Node. And then at the end of April, on the 30th, that Saturn conjuncts the south node. So this month, just, just letting you know, because that energy is already, you're really feeling lots of, lots of things happening in regards to your 
uh, love life, in regards to dating, in regards to what kind of people you've been dating. But that's pos possible with all that transformation, you know, that you just have a change of taste. Things could be happening in your children's lives, perhaps, um, hopefully they're not ruining their reputation with you or with the law, um, hopefully. And uh, other things that could be happening is they're graduating from school or they're moving from one school to another school <clears throat> to a higher education. So that could be happening. Um, so uh, like going from elementary or junior to junior high or going from high school to university, that's also very possible where there's a big transformation in your child's life, okay? So um, another card that I have here is there's an anchor. And perhaps um, this three plus five, this has to do with either a business contracts or um, relationship that um, you know that you find you find your spot. You're saying, I found the person I really want, or I found the job I really really want. I'm going to throw my anchor here and rest here a while. You do have you you could be a little you could be a little pessimistic. This is the hope card, okay? The hope card upside down. It's like. You have hope, but you're saying, but if only, maybe I need to like let go of this blockage more. Maybe, you know, the hope is there, but you could be doubting yourself or being a little pessimistic. Okay, so um, just stop thinking about your past now. Mercury was, was in retrograde to think about your past and do all the releasing. You did all the releasing you could. Now it's time to go forward and mesh baby <laughs> that's what they say to the eskimos to those sleigh dogs mesh okay so um yes that was the general horoscope reading for virgo april 2019 like share and subscribe and you can win <laughs> okay so hugs and kisses until next time goodbye